Hello. In this video, we are going to get to the equation that will finally allow us to make the connection between classical thermodynamics and the statistical concepts that we have introduced in the last few videos. What we are going to do is to arrive at an expression for ds, an infinitesimal change in the value of the entropy. Before we get on to that, though, let's just briefly review what we have done in the previous videos. So we started this process of studying statistical mechanics by introducing the notion of a microstate. We said that a microstate is a set of values for the positions and momenta of all the atoms in the system. We then said that phase space was the set of all possible microstates. That is to say, phase space is the set of all possible positions and momentums that the atoms could conceivably have. When we did this, we showed the following simple picture for a phase space containing five possible microstates, and noted that in general there are usually many more microstates in phase space. We noted that it is possible to calculate the values of the extensive thermodynamic variables, the volume, the energy and the number of atoms, for a microstate. We thus wrote the values of the volume, energy and number of atoms in microstate i as vi, ei and ni respectively. I then argued that we could construct thermodynamic states from microstates by applying two kinds of constraints on the system. The first thing we did was to fix some of the extensive variable values and to require them to have not any value other than some particular one of interest. We said that doing so made some of the microstates in phase space completely inaccessible. In our example, we thus said that the blue squares covered two of the microstates because these two microstates had the wrong number of atoms. Our next constraint was placed on the values of the remaining extensive thermodynamic variables. We said that these average the average values for these quantities were not allowed to be infinite. This introduces a probability distribution. In other words, we now have a probability for occupying each of the microstates in phase space. In the example shown here, the system thus has a probability P1 of being in microstate 1, a probability P3 of being in microstate 3, and a probability P4 of being in microstate 4. Obviously, if we take these three probabilities and add them all together, we get 1, as the system must be in one of these three microstates. We found an expression for these probabilities of being in the various microstates by minimising the information functional subject to, our, to the set of constraints shown here. In doing this, we use the method of Lagrange multipliers because we are solving a constrained optimization problem. Furthermore, in order to be general, we wrote our constraints on the average value of the extensive thermodynamic variables using the expression shown here. In other words, we did not use the symbols for energy and volume, and the usual extensive variables, in the interest of generality, we instead use the symbol VK for an extensive thermodynamic variable. The final expression for the probability of being in a microstate that we arrived at is shown here. Remembering that all these probabilities must add up to 1 allowed us to work out the value of the denominator in this expression. Z is given by the following equation, and we furthermore said that this quantity was known as the generalised partition function. The last thing we did was to note that the value of the entropy was equal to minus the value of the information for the distribution. By inserting the expression for the probability at the top of this slide into the expression for the information, we thus arrived at the formula shown here, for the entropy of a thermodynamic state. With all that material reviewed, let's now turn to the purpose of this video. Our aim is to determine what happens when we change the values of the extensive variables that we have constrained. Naively, based on everything that I've just said, this is going to change the set of microstates in phase space that are accessible to the system. We thus might imagine something like the following happens. 
When we change the number of atoms in the system, microstates 1, 3 and 4 now become inaccessible because these microstates contain the wrong number of atoms. Microstates 2 and 5 become accessible now because these states contain the correct number of atoms. We are not so interested in these details, however. What we would like to know is how to calculate the associated change in the value of the entropy. Now, in order to keep things general, just as we change the names of the extensive thermodynamic variables whose averages we constrained using Lagrange multipliers, we will also change the symbol that we are using to represent those quantities that we are keeping fixed. Hence, instead of writing this constraint on a delta function evaluated based on the number of atoms, we will instead write a general version in which we will use the symbol alpha superscript j to indicate some quantity that we are keeping fixed using a delta function like this. Obviously, alpha superscript j underscore i is the value of that quantity in microstate i. Our aim in this video will thus be to work out an expression for the partial derivative of the entropy with respect to alpha superscript j. Without further ado, let's calculate this partial derivative. If we take our expression for the entropy that we derived in the previous video and differentiate this with respect to alpha superscript j, we get the following. Let's now bring the d alpha superscript k, j, sorry, in the denominator on the left-hand side of this equation up to give the following. In other words, let's multiply both sides by a factor of d alpha superscript k. On the left-hand side, we now have three terms that have factors of d alpha superscript k in both the numerator and the denominator. We can thus, in a manner of speaking, cancel these terms and rewrite these infinitesimals as shown here. What we are doing in these steps is akin to what we do when we change the infinitesimal or measure when we do an integration by substitution. With these steps completed, we thus arrive at the following equation for ds over kb. In our next step, we need to consider the d capital psi term a bit more carefully. In fact, we were rather too quick to replace what we had previously, namely partial phi by partial alpha j, d alpha j. So let's rewrite it in this way once more. Now recall that phi psi is just the logarithm of the generalized partition function, as shown here. When we are asked to differentiate psi with respect to alpha j, we are thus being asked to differentiate the logarithm of the right-hand side of the equation shown here. This does not look too difficult, so let's give this a go. We exploit the chain rule here, and in the first step, recognize that the derivative of the logarithm with respect to whatever is inside the logarithm is just equal to 1 over whatever is inside the logarithm. The derivative of the exponential of a sum of functions is similarly straightforward. If we thus do these two simple things together, we get to the following result. If you need to pause the video at this stage and work through that piece of differentiation yourself, then that is probably a useful exercise. Let's now reorder these summations and perform this derivative of a product of functions using the product rule. If, while doing this, we also bring the e to the psi inside the summations, we get to the following result.
Now recall that the probability of being in a microstate is given by the expression shown in the grey box here. The right-hand side of this expression appears in both the first and second term shown at the equation at the bottom of this slide. We can thus replace these complicated terms by a comparatively sim simpler pi term. Now look at these summations. We have a sum over all microstates of a number that is specific to that microstate, either the value of our bk extensive variable for that microstate, or the first derivative of this quantity with respect to alpha j. This quantity is then multiplied by the probability of being in that microstate. This is the definition of the ensemble average though, so we can replace these two sums over all the microstates with the ensemble average for the bk extensive variable and the ensemble average for the first derivative of bk with respect to alpha j. Let's finish by bringing all the math we have derived together. If you remember, on the last but one slide, we showed that ds over kb was given by the expression shown here. Furthermore, we have now shown that we can replace the factor of d psi in, the, in this expression as follows. In the first term of this, in this second expression, the d alpha j appears in the numerator and the denominator. We can thus cancel this term and rewrite this part as d lambda k. This brings us to the following result. We next note that we are using this expression to replace the d superscript the d psi in the expression for ds over kb that appears at the top of this slide. In that, ex term, we have an ex a, in that expression, we have a term equal to the sum over all k of the ensemble average for bk multiplied by d lambda k. We also note that this same term appears with a coefficient of negative 1 in our expression for d psi. Hence, when we substitute the second expression into the first one, these two terms will cancel. We are thus left with the following expression for ds over kb. This is the final result that I wanted to arrive at in this video, so let's summarise what we have learnt in deriving it. Remember that we started by saying we wanted to work out the change that occurs in the entropy when we change the extensive variables that we are constrained to have a particular set of values. These fixed extensive variables have been given the symbol alpha j throughout so as to differentiate them from those variables that are not fixed but that are required to have an ensemble average that is finite. We use the symbol b superscript j for this second class of variable. The expression shows here allows us to relate the changes in entropy to the change in the values of the alpha j variables. In other words, we can use this expression to calculate how the entropy changes when the position of the constraint, the set of values for alpha j, changes. As a final note, notice that when alpha j changes, the value of all the ensemble averages of the bk quantities will change as well, and that these changes need to be considered when we calculate the overall entropy change. I hope this is clear, but if it is not, please try watching the video again and seeing if it is clearer after a second run through. Thank you for your attention.